It is very, very early, probably around 6 a.m., but that is the perfect time, in my opinion, to get a pork butt on the grill. Good morning. We don't necessarily like to get up super early on the weekends here at the Midlife Ride unless we're going to Vegas or unless we're doing barbecue. And that's what we're doing here today. Today we're doing a pork butt, which oddly enough comes from the shoulder of the pig. Even though it's called the butt, some people assume that's the part of the pig you're eating from, but you aren't. One of the best purchases we've made in the past three years or so has been a Traeger pellet grill. And since we made that purchase, I have gotten minorly obsessed with barbecue. And a lot of what I'm going to tell you today comes from people like Malcolm Reed on YouTube and Aaron Franklin, famous from Franklin Barbecue in Austin, Texas. A lot of what I'm gonna show you here is things I have learned from them. This is nothing really original. I already have the grill going outside, coming up to temperature. We're going to be cooking at 225 for the duration of the cook. And for a pork butt, and today ours is almost nine pounds, you can generally count on one hour of cook time per pound, which is part of the reason why you wake up so early to get this started. It takes a while to cook. A lot of it depends on what's going on with the weather outside. If it is really hot and really humid, it has a tendency to extend the cook time. I have found that when it's colder outside, it actually cooks a little bit faster, but point is you never know. So get started early and get that thing on the grill and get it going. So we have our pork butt here. And one of the things I like to do is pat it dry when I first take it out of the package. One of the things I like best about cooking a pork butt, besides it's delicious, is that you don't have to do a lot of prep work. There's not any trimming to do. All this fat is either going to render down and flavor your meat, or it's going to end up as scraps at the end of the cook. You know, it's not like something like ribs where you have to do some trimming or like brisket where you have to do a lot of trimming to get a good finished product. So this is really quick and easy. We have the grill going outside, coming up temperature. Um, the reason I do the grill first is because there is kind of a debate on whether or not to let the pork butt come up to room temperature before you put it on the grill. I think with poultry and with pork, it's best not to let that come up to room temperature just for food safety reasons. So while the grill is coming up to temp, I take the pork butt out of the fridge, get it unwrapped, pat it dry, and then we get it rubbed up. So we will start with the fat side first. And one of the things you need is a binder. I use just plain, regular yellow mustard. You can also use things like olive oil if you want to. And I do, but on pork butt, for whatever reason, I like the mustard better. So just a generous amount on there. Spread it around. Always remember to keep a dirty hand and a clean hand when handling your meat. That's what she said. <laughs> you don't need a ton of mustard. This The mustard doesn't act as a flavor enhancer. What it acts as is a binder because pork does not have a lot of, well, to be frank, it does not have a lot of blood like beef does. So you need something to help the rub stick and that's what this does. Now the vinegar in the mustard does affect it a little bit but not too much. The rub we use and have found is this rib rack dry rub, the original version. I experimented a lot with different rubs. This one provides a really good bark on the outside of the pork butt and uh, what you want to do once you have your mustard on is I start with the sides first and just get a liberal coating of the rub on there. And 
that's always fun trying to handle slippery stuff and in rubber gloves no less but you'll figure it out it just takes a little practice might ask which side I do first. I do the fat side first because that's going to go down when I put it on the grill. There's also a debate there. Fat side down or fat side up? My contention on the pork butt is you put the fat between the meat and the heat source. So in the case of the Traeger grill, the heat is coming from the bottom with the smoke circling up over top. So I have the fat on the bottom toward the heat source to protect it. Um, and to be honest, you're not going to eat this part anyway. It's going to end up as a fatty mess when you're pulling it at the end. So uh, it's really there to protect your meat from that heat. But even still, even though we're not going to eat this part in the end, still put some rub on there. All right. And now for the top part. your mustard on there and we'll do this if you're going to go heavy on any part of the rub I think it should really be the top because that's the part that's going to well stay on top the whole time you're not going to lose any rub off of it during the transfer process or as you scoot it around on the plate And also with these pork butts, that some people will really massage the rub in there. I, I don't see a reason to do that. It kind of soaks in by itself. And after a few minutes, creates kind of a tacky coating to it. So it pretty much does the work for you. So we are all rubbed up. Our pork butt is ready. One thing I will note, because it's still very dark outside, and you really won't be able to see it, is you notice in these pork butts you have a blade bone in there. Whether it makes a difference or not, I always place the pork butt on the grill with the bone toward the back of the cooking chamber. My reasoning for that is because that's where most of the heat is going to be concentrated because you're going to be losing some of the heat always up next to the door. So I wanna make sure that bone is exposed to constant heat. That's my theory, we'll see if it works. So now that we're all seasoned up, I know the grill is ready and up the temperature. We're going to put this on at 225. I'm just gonna let it cook for three hours and then go out there and check it. So uh, let's go. Another important thing to note and really one of the most important things I learned from Aaron Franklin is to always, no matter what kind of meat you're cooking, Always put a water pan in your cook chamber. It really helps keep the moisture in your meat. And I can't tell you what a huge difference it's made in whatever we've been cooking lately, whether it's been whole turkey breast or pork butts or ribs or whatever. Having that water pan in the cook chamber makes a huge difference in your finished product. So make sure to do that. All right, so our grill is up to temperature. We're going to place this, like I said, with the bone toward the back and right in the middle with the fat side down. And we're going to let this thing go for three hours and come back and check it. All right, welcome to daylight. We are three hours into our cook now, and this is the first time we're going to check the status of the pork butt. Now, there's an old saying out there that goes, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. And that's very much true because every time you open the lid to check, even though it's really tempting to do that, you're letting out heat and extending your cook time, which you really don't want to do when you're talking about, you know, an eight hour to 12 hour cook. You want to cook as quick as you can. And every time you open that lid, you want to have a purpose behind it. 
our purpose this time is to spritz the pork butt with a combination or with a mixture of apple cider vinegar and water, not to add flavor, but to keep the bark moist and keep it from drying out. The other thing we want to start doing is monitoring the temperature, not for the final cook temperature, but for the point at which we're going to wrap it in foil. That point for me is 160 degrees internal temperature. That's when I want to wrap it. And it doesn't, it, it will speed up the cook a little bit, but that wrap, what it really does is it keeps the meat from getting any more smoke. If you leave it in there too long unwrapped, the bark is going to develop a bitterness that you really don't want. And that's what that foil does, is it protects it from any more smoke. So let's open the lid and see what we have so far. All right, that's looking pretty tasty. That's got a really nice mahogany color to it. You can see it still has some moisture around here because we have our water pan going at the same time. But we're going to spritz it with this apple cider vinegar and water just to make sure our bark doesn't dry out and doesn't get bitter. So now that we have that, so you can see we use this Thermapro thermo meat thermometer and I have it set to 160 degrees. And when you put your probe in, I like to stick it right in the middle, go down a little bit and then come back a little bit. You want to make really sure that probe does not hit the bone because if it does, it's going to throw everything off. So now we have that set. Close the lid again and wait for the thermometer to hit 160 and once that happens we're going to come back out and wrap it. Alright, it's been around 2 hours and 15 minutes since we last checked in on the pork butt and we are at 160 on the thermometer so it's time to wrap to protect the pork butt from getting any more smoke. So let's open the lid and see how it looks. That's pretty pretty right there. We definitely want to stop pork butt from getting any more smoke at this point. Make sure you're either using some gloves to handle this or a towel, something to keep your bare skin from the pork butt because this thing is really hot at this point. I'm not going to remove the probe. I want that to stay in the same place so that the temperature remains consistent. Because there seems to be quite a bit of moisture, like this does not look dry to me, I'm not going to spritz it again. If your pork butt looks dry to you, go ahead and spritz it. And maybe we'll add just a little. But that looks really good. I like to use two layers of foil just in case the first layer rips for some reason. Undercooked poultry and pork. 
So I want to make sure that is done before we pull it off the grill. So uh, now we wait. We're around five hours and 15 minutes into a nine pound pork butt. So maybe a couple more hours, maybe three. You just never really know. Um, it's one of the great things and one of the terrible things about cooking this stuff. It's a labor of love. So now we wait and see what happens. We'll see you again in a little bit. All right, so after seven hours and 45 minutes, we are at 198 on the Thermopro. So we're going to take it off the grill now and take it inside and let it rest for around an hour before we unwrap it and start pulling the pork. So let's see what happens. All right, one of the things you want to do is take the probe out and that hole that is left there in the foil, seal that up, pull it off. And we're going to take it inside and let it rest for a bit. All right, so we have let the pork butt rest for about an hour. So now is the moment of truth. And one of my favorite things other than actually eating it is what's about to happen right now. Unfortunately, you are not here to smell this, but unwrapping this for the first time is pretty much the best thing ever. So we've let it rest and letting it rest and you can see all the juice that has come out of the pork butt now. And that's one of the thing it one of the things letting it rest does is it lets the meat relax and reabsorb some of that moisture. Now here's the best part. And there she is and she smells amazing. <laughs> This is the best part. As a cook who is really into barbecue, this is the best part for me. Now, other than the way it looks, which is really good, the other moment of truth, remember that bone? If that bone comes out clean, you know you did a good job. So now it's just about pulling the pork and getting it ready to eat. Maybe it's for tonight, maybe it isn't. We're going to eat on this all week long and maybe we'll even show you some of our recipes that we'll use this for all week. But uh, yeah, it came out good. Mm -hmm.